Amy Schumer is here now. Uh, I found some pictures on your phone that I, I think need some explaining. <laughs> they were shot. <laughs> <People's> <laughs> <laughs> Our couch. Do you not remember bread? It was mostly made of bread and. Why do we laugh? Why is it that we don't laugh at the same things? And which tactics do comedians use to make audiences laugh? There are three prominent theories to describe what makes us laugh and why. Before watching the truly funny clips with Amy Schumer, I'll quickly explain these theories. The theories aren't mutually exclusive but complementary. Each of them describes certain aspects of what we find funny about a movie scene or show. I'll start by looking at a couple of Amy's interviews with Jimmy Fallon, and at the end of the video, it's time for one of the biggest challenges of my life. This video goes on until we can't take it anymore, because of all the fun, obviously. If you're still not subscribed to this empowering and inclusive channel, subscribe for weekly videos. As you can tell, we have lots of fun here. Welcome aboard. The first theory is superiority theory. People laugh because they feel superior to the character they're laughing at. People recognize the character's embarrassment in the embarrassing situations they're placed in, but have little to no empathy with the character, precisely because of their superior perspective. Thus, this is skillless humor. And for something to be funny, it's important to people that they don't feel guilty about laughing. Unless they're bad people, of course. The second theory is relief theory. According to this, we laugh at utterances that we normally prohibit and suppress, utterances that might not be socially acceptable or polite. This is the relief part, getting relief from all the tension we build up by suppressing certain emotions and behaviors. The third theory is incongruity theory. This type of humor can be summed up with one word, mismatch like the difference between short and tall, old and young, nerdy and cool, the difference between expected behavior and the character's actual behavior, like saying inappropriate things, and a mismatch between the character's physicality and psychological disposition and the actions he or she performs. This has a lot to do with stereotypes. There are more aspects to these theories, but this framework helps us understand why we can't help but laugh at Amy's jokes. It's time for Explain This Photo. Now, uh, before the show, I don't know why we agreed to do this. Amy and I swapped cell phones. I have major regrets. And, uh... <laughs> Jimmy's laughter functions as a cue to the audience. This is true for talk shows in general. In this short clip and many of the other clips we're about to see, superiority humor is the underlying framework because it's understood that we're about to see some embarrassing photos. This allows the audience to relax, sit back and watch as other people embarrass themselves. And because the audience knows that the embarrassment is scripted and controlled, this is guiltless humor. I just wanted, well, this one I've seen I've seen this one before. Okay, just, this a little is, uh, nervous. No, don't be nervous. So this is... This oh, is, okay. <laughs> um, I know some people in this one, right? This uh, is, that's Jerry Seinfeld. So, um, I do a lot of charity work with huge pigs. This is not no, true at not all. True. This okay, is not... Fine. You, no, yeah, that's, that's, not, not, that's not true. That but the segment plays on incongruity. Incongruity between the beach and the animal. Furthermore, there's incongruity between the animal and how the people behave around it. Without the animal, the picture wouldn't be particularly noteworthy. But because the animal's there, the exaggerated facial expressions can look that more misplaced. Amy's comment. Um, I do a lot of charity work. Displays an incongruity between the innocuous claim to be doing charity work and her subsequent words that can be said to have a double meaning with huge pigs. This in the Bahamas, there's a place called Pig Island, and so they showed uh, an episode of The Bachelor that they all went there. So I thought that that looked really awful and not fun. But everyone else wanted to do it, so we did it. And it turned out I was right. Um, <laughs> Wait, but no. these are like pigs that swim with you and stuff, right? Yeah, you swim with the pigs. So with the words. So I thought that that looked really awful and not fun. There's a mismatch between Amy's setup. In the Bahamas, there's a place called Pig Island, and so they showed uh, an episode of The Bachelor that they all went there. And delivery and facial expression. 
as the setup and facial expression would have us believe she was about to make a positive statement. And I was right, she was says, right. which is meant to be funny, because in theory, it's unexpected that this experience was awful, especially when we compare her statement to the happy facial expressions. So, all in all, another funny joke. Let's see what else is funny about this interview. I met your boyfriend backstage, and yes. he's a very nice uh, gentleman. Isn't he nice? He is. I think he's cool. Do you enjoy? Is everything working out well? Are you enjoying him? We're great. Um, we're really good. The um, we uh. If the circumstances were different, Jimmy's questions might have been treated seriously. However, in this setting, his sudden, serious concern for how things are working out for Amy can seem awkward, an awkwardness which is intentionally emphasized by Amy's following difficulty in substantiating her claim. Pauses, even micro-pauses, are crucial in making people laugh. And I, I think saw you it's, everywhere. Right? It's yeah. because I think because he's really cute and I think people were like, what? Like dating? It, why, he has all his teeth? Like people were shocked. <laughs> Here, there's yet another mismatch between setup and delivery. Cute is an innocuous description of him. This is the setup, while the delivery. What? Like dating? It, why, he has all his teeth? Is unexpected. In theory, there's a mismatch between the audience's expectations and what Amy ends up saying. She checks to see if the audience is laughing. <laughs> which allows her to repeat and thus emphasize this hysterically funny comment. <laughs> <laughs> People said he has all teeth. Yeah, he has all teeth. Yeah, he has all teeth. He has all teeth. Yeah, he has all teeth. 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 And his family's so nice. They live in Illinois. His mom's the most excited person you'll ever meet in your life. She's just like everything is like oh, and her name's Deb, and she's like oh my gosh, like she's she's like the girls. All Amy did was raise her voice unnecessarily. She's like oh my gosh, like she's she's like the. Even though that can be seen as a socially awkward thing to do. It's hard to see why it's funny enough to make a segment of the audience laugh. Amy obviously realizes that she needs to add more substance in order to make this funny for the entire audience. This especially cooperative audience. You know the girls on The Bachelor, whenever they walk into a hotel room, they act like they've never seen one before. They're like, ah! <laughs> a couch! They're like, a mug! You know, you're like, ah! a couch! They're like, a mug! You know, like... <laughs> Apparently, raising your voice is the funniest thing ever, because as we all know, Jimmy only laughs at things he finds funny. And that's the thing with great comedians like Amy. Their humor is meant to offer relief to people. If for a moment we assume that the audience were genuinely laughing here, hard to do, I know, but give me a break here, they'd be laughing at the relief that Amy's behavior offers them. She's behaving in ways that some people might want to behave sometimes, but can't because of social conventions and expectations. Of course, I'm speaking purely from a theoretical standpoint. So I told her, I'm like, Deb, they're going to call you. Just say no comment. And she's like, oh, I got it, Aim. Don't you worry. I would, no comment. Right? I, not a problem. <laughs> not even 10 minutes later, I get a Google alert that says Time Magazine that Deb was like, I've never heard of her before in my life. <laughs> Jimmy's laughter doesn't sound overcompensating at all. His laughter is in total alignment with how funny Amy is in this spontaneous interview. Amy plays in so-called characterological incongruity, indicating a mismatch between the character and what the character says and does. She's made sure to portray this Deb as a loyal and over-enthusiastic person in order to enhance the surprise that Deb denied knowing Amy. And the biggest underlying incongruity in this entire interview the physical and social incongruity of Amy's clothes. By the way, I heard, I... Use that shot! No, no, you don't use that. And just as we thought things couldn't get any better, Amy has a profound statement she wants to make. Watch, this is powerful. And it sure made an impact on me. But what I learned is that people really don't like being classified as by plus size. We don't need these labels. We don't need them, you know? It should just say what size you are, right? Why? There's nothing funnier than empowering messages mixed in with something that's supposed to be funny. It's a winning combination that makes everybody laugh. Just ask Lily Singh. Like the time I pointed out the gender gap in the Forbes list for online creators. There's an invisible gatekeeper called culture. 
I made history with my late night show, A Little Late with Lily Singh. Thank you. Thank you. Words cannot explain to you how exhausting, emotionally and spiritually challenging that was. I would like to present to you a set of guidelines I very eloquently call how to build a table that doesn't suck. <laughs> I've been told I'm very literal. <laughs> Now, I believe stories make the world go around. You, you thought it had something to do with the solar system? Jokes on you, it's stories. <laughs> I don't know why, but I'm starting to feel as exhausted as Amy. So let's move on to my promise in the intro. One of the biggest challenges of my life. The challenge is called try to laugh. And it's so very simple, yet so complex. The idea is, I watch excerpts from one of Amy's shows and try to laugh. I've been warned that it's very likely that I'll lose this challenge. But I truly believe that I can go where no man's gone before. We take care of ourselves. Like, look at all the gorgeous girls here. Look at you guys, right? We do so much. Do you guys remember? Like, do you remember bread? Do you know? Remember bread? It was mostly made of bread, and you would eat it. And let's just eat bread again. Can we just stop with all the showering and the whatnot? I still think I'm in my 20s. Like at a bar, I'll still show my license. They're just like, we can see your face. Just go in the bar. Did you want us to know that you're not an organ donor? Uh, God, I, I haven't done anything I'm supposed to do in my 30s. Like I'm always the last one to know things aren't cool. Like I was the last one of my friends to know it wasn't cool to drink like a homeless person anymore. That's how you drink when you're younger, like a homeless person. You drink like 40s in paper bags at bus stops, right? Some people still do it. You run from the cops, you pee behind dumpsters. I remember more than once being like, I just found these beers in the bushes, let's drink them. And no one was like, ew, you're a vagrant. They were like, we're gonna remember tonight forever. <laughs> uh. I just need to focus, that's all. Concentrate. I get uh, some fancy stuff. I get acupuncture now. That's fancy. I go to like a nicer waxing place. You know, a place where they like, change the paper. I'm like, ooh. I'm the Duchess of Deutschland. Like, what is this? It's like literally no blood on the paper. I'm like, mm, what's the occasion? Uh, yeah, acupuncture, waxing. Just really paying for more and more Asian people to hurt me. That's what happens. With money, I guess. And I'm staying at nicer hotels. That's the thing. That's really cool. Because for 10 years, I've been on the road staying at just awful places. Just not even a comfort inn, like a comfort western. Just a, like an off-brand place where like the sheets hurt, you know? It's like for four thread count, it's BYO towels, just, just like shivering in the shower. They're like, you should have called ahead. You're like, uh. oh my God. Like I was just staying at a W, you know that chain, right? The W, you got, can you believe how protect, like just to call yourself that, like we're just gonna be a letter. Let's just. Should we shorten it? Should we just be the dub? I don't know. I don't want rich people to have to talk too long. It appears I've let you all down. I'm sorry about that. It wasn't my intention. Thanks for tuning in and see you next time.